Welcome to the fourth video in my APM series and in this video we're going to talk about the different modes that are available on the APM board. Now this detail is right as we're recording it and we're recording it at the start of August in 2014. It's changing all the time as the version of the software changes so just keep that in mind. What I'll do is I'll actually put a link as we go through each of the modes to the location on the web. Um, most of these are going to actually be locations on the copter.ardupilot.com slash wiki uh, area and on there there's actually going to be a link. So if you want to read all about the modes one by one then you'll have more detail. But the idea of this video is to very quickly just explain what is currently available through APM, how those modes work, and also just do a few pointers to the standard settings in the advanced tab where you can go and change a few bits and pieces if you want to change the behavior of each mode. Okay, so now we've kind of been mooching around Mission Planner and we've got an idea where we set the modes um, and to the other bits and bobs. Uh, before we go any further, if you're not sure about where you set the modes, then go and watch the first video in this series. In that one, we actually talk about how you configure the modes and uh, set them to the switch on your radio. And um, now we've said that, let's kind of run in and go through all these modes one by one. So we're actually going to go through each of these in turn, but before we do, let's just talk about how um, these things actually work. So there's a number of modes and it looks a little bit daunting at first but some of them are very similar and we'll kind of point that out as we go through so we'll start at stabilize and we'll go all the way through right to the bottom which is follow me now the important thing here is that there's a number of these that require a GPS lock before you can take off and obvious ones like you know return to launch is going to need a GPS lock because it needs to store the home position when it's armed before it starts to fly but others need it too. So the first thing we'll do is let's just split this list out into two lists one where a GPS lock is needed and one where a GPS lock isn't. So hopefully that's just kind of a shorthand for you of which is which. Now in the mission planner screen you'll have noticed that by the side of the drop down box where you select the actual modes there were two other checkboxes, one called simple and one called super simple. And let's cover that very quickly now. Simple mode is like carefree mode in other um, bits and pieces. It's where irrespective of which way the craft is pointing, it always responds to your control input as though it was bottom in. So let's go through an example. So say for example you take the craft off and the back of the craft is facing towards you and you fly it away. Whether you've got simple mode turned on is even if you rotate the craft 180 degrees so it's now nose in towards you, if you pull the um, control stick down towards you it will fly towards you. So irrespective of the attitude of the craft it will always respond to the sticks as though it was flying when you took it off. Super simple mode is a little bit smarter than that. What it does is it uses the machine's current GPS location compared to the GPS location at home and interprets the sticks with relation to that. So that means that it can actually fly behind you as well as in front of you and that ability to control the sticks works the same way. You don't have to account for the fact that the craft is actually pointing in a different direction. My recommendation is never use these. Um, they're handy if, if you need to get out a jail free card um, and you need to, uh, you're not sure which way you're pointing but it just is something that as a RC pilot you have to get to grips with and my recommendation would be just get to grips with it. Um, I wouldn't use them. Okay, now we've talked about those two modes. Uh, those are options available on each of the settings. Let's then go to the next one and talk about the modes that you have to be in to arm the board. And in the last video, we talked about the fact that you needed to be in specific modes to arm the APM, and here they are. So you need to be in either loiter, stabilize, altitude hold, or acro mode for the board to kick in. If it's set in any of the others, then it won't arm. So if you're having problems, that's one of the things to check, that's on the list. 
So let's go through these things one by one and we'll actually start with our friend Stabilize. So the way I've laid these slides out is that on the left there's just a little visual indicator to see where you are on the list and on the right in the larger text it gives us the key bits and pieces about the mode we're looking at and under that, which I'm not really going to go too much detail, it kind of points you towards where the configurable settings are in Mission Planner to change the way that this mode behaves. And at the very bottom there's the link to the actual website page that you can go to to read up about this in depth. So Stabilize is a great mode. It's actually one that I use an awful lot. It's the one that I um, uh, land and arm in. It is kind of like auto level in um, multi-wee and it just keeps the craft trimmed, which is why it's really important to make sure that you've done all of the accelerometer calibration perfectly. Uh, it won't keep you in one place, wind will still push it around and you manage the throttle as the pilot to manage the height of it as well. But I would always suggest personally that the uh, one of the modes that you always start off in is stabilize. You can change things like the maximum angle that the uh, model will lean, that obviously affects the uh, maximum speed that the model will fly at. Um, the ax, um, the actual um, things like the speed of the yaw, um, there's a PID settings, there's loads of stuff you can change here but I would say this one is uh, going to be one you spend a bit of time in. Next one we'll look at is our friend Altitude Hold. Altitude Hold is great, you just flick that switch and the model will maintain its current altitude. Um, it uses the throttle stick in a slightly different way so around the middle dead band which is usually about 40 to 60 percent the model just maintains the height that it's got if you go above 60 percent throttle it will start to climb if you go below below 40 percent throttle it will start to descend and um, if you want to change the rate of change of the altitude you can do that by changing that pilot underscore velzy max bits and pieces does use the barometer for this. Um, the barometer is pretty good in the APM. It's better than some of the other boards, but you have to make sure that it's covered ideally with a little bit of foam and it just stops some of the randomness that you might get. Next thing we'll look at then is loiter. Uh, Loiter's a really nice mode. You see this in demos in videos all the time. Once you click in Loiter, it uses altitude hold that we've just looked at and then also uses the GPS position um, to kind of keep itself locked in one point in the sky. You can arm in this mode if you want to. Um, there are separate PIDs in Mission Planner to configure Loiter specifically. Um, and there's also a special version of Loiter which isn't implemented yet but will be later this year called Optical Flow Loiter or OF Loiter. And Optical Flow is, if you remember those um, optical mice um, where basically it's taking multiple photos and comparing them and seeing which way everything's moved. It's kind of the same thing with a camera pointed at the ground, just um, controls position. The, you can change things like the um, the maximum horizontal speed of the copter during loiter mode, so how quickly it corrects its position using the WPNAV underscore loit underscore core speed parameter default is about five meters a second which I would suggest unless you're in a really really windy environment should be loads. Next one is return to launch uh, one of my favorites uh, this will when you flick it into this mode stop the craft it will then ascend to the default height it will then fly back to you Interestingly, um, it will maintain the direction that it's in. So if it was nose in, it'll fly back to your nose in. If it was um, tail in, it will fly back to your tail in. It doesn't matter, it just uses that. Um, you need to make sure the compass is rock solid for this, as with all GPS um, navigation bits and bobs. Once it arrives at the GPS location that was stored when it was armed, it'll sit there, typically uh, five seconds um, is the default. Once that's finished, then it'll land and um, shut down the motors. Really impressive thing, uh, great to watch, um, wonderful when you're flying and you're getting tired and um, you know your um, or your goggles are steaming up then you can flick the switch and this thing will come home. 
Uh, loads of things you can change here in the mission planner side of things to change how it behaves. Um, but I would say that the defaults are pretty solid. The only thing just to be aware of is the altitude, because obviously if there are lots of uh, trees around that are taller than 100 feet, then you want that a little bit higher. Next one we'll look at, auto. Uh, this is the mode that will then start the model flying the mission that's been programmed into it. So in Mission Planner, in a later video we'll look at this, you can actually set a number of waypoints and load those waypoints into the um, model. When you flick into auto, it will then follow that mission and go to each of those waypoints in turn and follow the commands one by one. Um, it actually uses the altitude hold and loiter functions to um, actually do that. Uh, so you're really doing very little once that is happening. If you're doing mission planner, make sure the last thing in the um, mission is either land or return to launch because um, a weird thing about the way mission planner works is that even though it looks like you're creating a, um, a closed loop of flight instructions, it actually doesn't. Uh, but we'll look at that uh, later. Um, a couple of things at the bottom that you can change. You can change the maximum speed and uh, the max maximum vertical speed as well as the radius of the waypoints so that you don't spend too much time hunting for them. Next one is Acro. Acro is um, quite nice, I guess. It, it, the model maintains its altitude, so if you put the nose down so it's 10 um, degrees, then it will keep that. It completely manual throttle and um, it requires constant control input so this is like the very first multi-copters that came out with very simplistic basic control it's like trying to balance a golf ball on top of a beach ball you're always having to control and manage everything the throttle your pitch roll the full thing this is where some of us kind of started, so this kind of feels like the old days. Because it is so difficult to master, you can set this up as um, an acro trainer mode um, on one of the different channels, 7 or 8, to turn it on, and you can set it up as well. But I would, wouldn't suggest that this is one that you go for straight away. Next one is Sport. Uh, this is quite nice, actually. It's good use for filming and FPV because it... It again retains its attitude so you can have it if you think of it like doing a dolly shot you can set the model moving in the air and the model will continue to move in that um, the maximum degree it will lean is 45 degrees so that kind of controls the maximum speed height is managed automatically it's kind of using the altitude hold features to do that so if you want to and I'll take a video down a field and you just want to set the model off and let it just go on its own, this is a great way to do it. Drift, a um, bit of a weird one, this one. Um, I don't use it a lot, but it allows you to fly the model just using the pitch and roll. And um, as you move around, the controller will actually do automated yaw. So if you've ever flown a three channel plane where you just have elevator and rudder and the, the turns happen naturally through those just those two control surfaces then this is essentially what it does it gives very smooth flight in the air and if you want to do very smooth um, shots like you were flying a plane but also have the ability to hover then this could be the one for you guided is next guided is quite cool actually what you do is you stay connected to the model using mavlink you need to have Mission Planner running on the PC or one of the Android devices. And then what you do is by clicking on the map, it sends that GPS location to the model and that's where it goes to. So it's kind of like fly by wireless. So rather than use the transmitter, you can fly the model through Mission Planner. Very similar to Follow Me, which we'll look at the end, but a nice way to do it if you're um, you know, doing some aerial survey bits and pieces, you can actually click on the bit of the sky you want the machine to sit in. Next one, Circle. Circle's quite nice. That's one where it's, um, you set a position and the, the machine will then circle around that GPS location at the radius that you set and it will also do it nose in. So that's quite nice if you are trying to do 360 uh, degree videos of a feature 
or a house, you can actually set a nice big diameter um, for the circle radius, click the GPS location to be the house, and then the copter will actually fly around while keeping the camera pointed at that central point. Throttle uh, controls the height, but apart from that really, the model's doing everything else. Position. Um, really identical to Loiter, but with manual throttle control, because Loiter, of course, um, manages the height itself. Land, guess what? That does exactly what it says on the tin. It lands the model. Um, as it comes down to 10 meters, it's actually using the regular altitude hold settings. Below that, as it gets below 10 meters, it actually uses the land underscore speed setting to land which is about 50 centimeters a second which uh, is a very soft landing speed and um, the model can actually land it nicer than i can most of the time once it's landed and it can sense it's landed shuts down the motors and disarms which is awesome a couple of things you can change there you can change the wp nav speed down and also land speed to change it but i'd recommend that you um, you keep the land speed what it is on a specific reason it's pretty spot on Last one then is follow me. Uh, this is the same to the guided mode that we looked at a couple of minutes ago. Um, again, you link to the ground station and this one, uh, it actually just follows the GPS location of the ground station. So you might see some videos on YouTube where somebody will have the application on a smartphone or tablet and the machine will kind of follow them around at um, a, a specific height. Really not sure how safe this is. Um, I like the you know big quad and hexcopters far enough away from me so if something happens it doesn't fall down and hit me. Having it so that it's always going to be somewhere above my head just feels really dangerous to me but it does look cool. So hopefully that uh, is an introduction and good enough for you to understand the modes that are currently available, gives you an idea of what the APM is capable of, gives you the links to find out more about them and hopefully it will be useful if you're thinking about getting the board and looking for a specific mode. Recommendation is if you need to know more, go to the web links at the bottom. Um, the ardupilot.com website is a fantastic wealth of information, um, but please like, subscribe, comment, and if you need to talk about any of these, my help out channels available. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.